So Reason is really all about the amazing devices we make. So I think I just want to start showing you a new synth that you probably haven't seen anything like before. So this is Object. This is our latest release, a physical modeling synthesizer. The big thing with Object, I think, is we focused on two things, like sounding really good and letting you take control over sounds that you probably couldn't otherwise. So I'll just start by playing you some stuff and hopefully that makes you a bit interested. It really excels at making these kind of sounds realistic, but not necessarily real sounds. So this one is perhaps a string instrument, but probably one you haven't heard before. But what's really exciting about this one is how much control you're getting. So that, that's what's cool. So if I'll just take, uh, I'll take this first patch we started at. It's kind of a bell-like sound, but we wanted to approach physical modeling like synthesis. It is synthesis. So you have these resonators where you have a lot of control over the sound. So for example, how long does it ring out? How much of the high overtones are you getting? Are you getting weird pitch modulation? Oh. That can really make it sound unrealistic in an exciting way. Uh, and even if you kind of like the basis of this sound, we've uh, uh, added a randomizer that says, okay, I kind of like it, but can I change it? So I can choose any of these resonator and just kind of randomize it. Ooh. And every time I click, I just get a new. variation mm. and that's a, a really fun thing i think to let people really get in there with this kind of obscure form of synthesis and see where it can take you this is it sounds really good like it's yeah. a legit like wicked sounding device okay fair we, enough. we worked extremely hard on that and it also does stuff that isn't perhaps melodic so it does pretty amazing percussion actually here's for example an udu patch You are actually tapping really fast on the keyboard, yeah, there, I'm aren't just you? It, like, playing my keyboard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it also makes stuff like uh, you know a timpani, which is extremely fun. I often use it in my tracks. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Classic timpani user. Yeah. But it does stuff that only a synth can do. So yeah. when you sample a timpani, you just get you know the hit and it rings out. Here we have automatic legato, which if you know timpani, you can actually push a pedal to detune it. Mm. But of course, it also does more, you know, synthetic stuff like pads that has kind of an acoustic character. Ah. So we worked extremely hard on this, and, and I think it's one of the more exciting instruments in a long time, just because it gives you a, a different sound. And that's what, what we really tried to do at Reason Studios. We tried to actually make something that feels different, that feels unique, that you can't really get anywhere else because, you know, we love geeky instruments and effects as much as anyone. We just want to make the stuff we think is exciting. You've told me before about Pele, um, who is like a, a sort of DSP legend. And for those who aren't familiar, he's one of the guys behind the original Nord Lead, like the DSP engine of the Nord Lead, which although it's like one of the OG virtual analogs, I recently got a Nord Lead 2 and the sound of that machine is just good. Like it yeah. sounds good, even though it uses very little DSP and it, it kind of made me, I had a bit of a like eureka moment that it's not just about the power, but the chef behind the DSP, you know, you can, you can make something very low power sound very good if you know what you're doing. And, and he works for reason. He, yeah, he's the co-founder even. So he's behind a lot of these instruments, like the sound of them, which yeah. is really uh, probably why they sound really wicked. Yeah. And there's, there's this balance of, you know, great audio code too, but actually being a musician and hearing what's fun to twist and what rotaries are important, right? That's what makes a good instrument. Yeah, and you can even do crazy stuff that I haven't really shown you. Like, you don't have to play this like an instrument. Instead, you can route audio into it and, and kind of make it a resonator of the old school type. So here's a little patch. That's a plastic tube slap. But I can just take, you know, a random drum loop here, drag it into my rack, 
route that in, play it back, and then... actually <laughs> use it as a resonator rather than an instrument that it's quite the crazy resonator do you ringsed into clouds or clouds into ringsed it just then didn't yeah you? exactly and you can of course use this on any external signal in, in ableton in the plugin too just route it to the sidechain input then so now you just started showing us something very reasony which is this kind of pretend 90s studio or 80s yeah. indeed that you may have so if, if reason's heart is its devices the the real heart is kind of the rack where they live. Uh, we've always had this rack metaphor. And one of the really good things with having that is that you, you see what's going on. You know, you actually look at an instrument that doesn't hide that much from you, right? If we just take a, another random synthesizer here, maybe go, uh, go simpler. This one really shows you the parameters in a very clear way. But when you start doing effects and stuff, it's actually quite powerful how you can start connecting things. So at the very basic level, I can take this creamy synth bass. But if I want to start building a chain, right, I can just go into my effects category and check out some of these devices. So we're, we're kind of in the five reasons world. We're in, in reason two now. Object okay. is a reason. The rack is another great reason. And I can add maybe some tape emulation i can add what maybe this? a little so that's like a tape sim it it's basically a you know instagram filter for audio right so you can do tape a classic hi-fi just a lot of oh yeah yeah bottom or even really ah. compressed radio vinyl or even weird stuff but i really like using it just for some coloration right yeah and then you can start adding other more traditional effects, right? Maybe I want uh, a delay so I can set up a basic echo. Maybe make it stereo. Maybe use some filtering at the delays and some a bit of wobble at the pitch. Oh, yeah. There you go. And while I'm doing this, all of this is routed up in reason. So you see the audio outputs going from this, going into that one. The audio output of this is going into the delay and the delay is going back to your output. So it's actually, it's used in schools quite a lot to actually learn how signal flow works. Like you're, mm. a, you're a hardware guy and you know how much you actually need to understand. Hang on, what, what am I patching yeah. here, right? What's the signal flow? So that's why Reason works this way. But it's not just audio. It's control voltage too. But if I want some extra modulation of this bass that I didn't have before, I can just do like, yeah, I'll add a sequencer. I'll draw in a little curve thingy and I can connect this curve output to say the filter frequency hmm. and now i'm just getting oh yeah yeah i mean that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah it's the analog methodology so i just added a sequencer to a synth that didn't have one right yeah that's really cool that's like that is really cool and i, I like the sort of it looks fun do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you remember you talking about like your devices have quite disparate sort of designs on, on purpose. So it looks like you've got loads of different manufacturers gear in your rack. And it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's sort of a fun analogy. That's what we try to do in the rack too, to make sure it feels like, you know, you bought a new cool thing. It might have been at a flea market. It might have been the latest release, but like, here's a new toy for you. Yeah. And the other really fun part with the rack is like, if I like this thing, I can just say, okay, this is my new device. I'm going to combine this into what's called a combinator. And this is kind of where the rack goes a, a little bit uh, beyond. So I can make this into a device. I can say, okay, I'm going to make this my dedicated synth. But actually, it's just going to have one control and one button. And this control is going to look big. And this switch is going to be next to it. And this switch is going to be a flat red switch. And I'm going to change the background here to maybe some orange thing. I can load in an image here if I want, right? And then I can say, this is going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like Which is, your device like, that's, that's what you want, right? The one-knob device. You are basically cool. designing my dream device. Yeah. And then I just take cool and say cool clearly yeah. Yeah. is going to be the filter frequency. Of course. But it's never going to go that high. It's just yeah, going to go I up see. here. And cool's also gonna increase the filter drive. 
And now I have yeah. this macro control that basically just, this is my patch now, and I can kind of keep this around, save it for later, and say, this is my dream synth. And you can really, once you get into it, make some pretty impressive things that are just built out of our devices. So here's one of the built-in patches that... Uh, kind of a thick, juicy, mode mm. style bass. And inside it's just, yeah, there's a limiter, there's a mixer, there's an echo, there's a synthesizer, yeah. there's a bit of saturation. So you can basically build your dream device here too, which I think is one of the coolest things in the rack. It's, I'd not really thought about doing that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, you can do things like obviously in live itself, you can have like device racks and stuff and you can collapse things and you can build macros out. But I like the idea that you, it looks like you actually make a device here. You really do yeah. craft your own little thing that is a, is a permutation of stuff you like. Getting good musical results often means, you know, working with something that looks inspiring to you. Yeah. Like, we, we made tests that shown that synths with wooden sides sound better. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just how it is, that's right? Fact. We're visual creatures too. So the rack is a, is a huge part of Reason, and that's the core of both the DW and the plugin. That's what you're working with. Of course, there's an effect and instrument version too. I remember when we were chatting at Superbooth, you were saying how, like, it just... It's about not using something that looks like a spreadsheet. Yeah. When you've spent a whole day looking at spreadsheets, you know, you want something that looks fun because it is meant to be fun and it's supposed to be inspiring and it's meant to be play. Exactly. And that kind of leads us to, to our third reason. I've used a little bit now, but reason comes with, you know, over 80 devices that will be new to you if you haven't used it before and that also are quite exciting. So this one's especially for you, because yeah. this is our take on a kind of fixed architecture modular synth that first sounds really good. Ah, the Sanderson brothers called and they want, they want a sound back. <laughs> yep. But also has a proper cabling interface. Okay. okay. That's kind of, you know, meets East Coast, meets West Coast kind of hybrid with some of our favorite things like this resonator, comb delay, uh, complex oscillator and so on. That's interesting having like comb delay bedded into the, the engine. I mean, that's for car plus strong or for other things? Yeah, exactly. Car plus strong stuff, but also like, uh, you know, a lot of Dave Smith since had this uh, tuned feedback that was mostly used to kind of just lock on to interesting frequencies and change the sound. And this is, this is great for okay. that. Okay, wicked. Uh, but of course, like everyone, we need a really powerful, big synth too. So Europa is our wavetable synth that does anything from kind of lush polys. But also sounds wicked. a lot of simpler sounds. So like one of my favorite and this is kind of cheating because I made it, but it's just a very simple sine wave based thing that just adds a little bit of random folding and noise. But of course it also does just nice fat synth sounds. That sounds wicked. Is that wave, is this a wavetable synth or is it? Kind of. It's a, more of a spectral synthesizer because what it's doing, so let's get geeky for a sec. I mean, who will complain? What it's doing is not just wavetable. So you have a wavetable, you can load a wavetable and it's here and it's a... It's quote-unquote analog waveform wavetable. Yeah. yeah. But you also have these dynamic wavetables that aren't actually just one single wave. This actually has movement yeah. in it. And the combination of these together with modifiers, like anything from wave folding. I see. Yes, indeed. That's pretty cool. But this section is quite unique. So this is a per oscillator, per voice spectral filter, which means that you can have really weird filters because they're not modeled for from analog stuff. It's basically just changing the waveform in real time. So you can do extremely strange things like have a low pass filter that has Basically an infinite slope. Which is a thing you don't necessarily think that is weird. until you <laughs> until you realize that okay, let's let's set up like a really big kind of uh, let's call it a, a fat kind of unison stack here. Do a little bit of and have a sub oscillator. 
sometimes you kind of don't want these really detuned unison things to have the fundamental because the fundamental kind of needs to be solid so then you can on just this oscillator do like a high pass thing with a super slope and just cut out the fundamental of the sound <laughs> Each oscillator get, has its own filter. Yeah, and get complete control, but also does crazy stuff like just, you know, random gain. Why not? I was going to say, that sounds very spectral to me. No, yeah. realize it's called Each spectral. overtone can just randomly shift. and It's a very powerful synthesizer. It does classic analog stuff too, but if you're a sound designer, then it, it's going to be very fun for you. <laughs> I thought, when I looked at this, I thought this was just going to be like a trad poly synth, but it's... Whilst it's obvious it can do those things, it is also obvious that it's not a trad poly synth. It reminds yeah. me more of like the Hydra synth, but it's different to the Hydra synth. We really have like we have a philosophy to make new things for new music rather than try to emulate the past. Yeah. Maybe it's a reaction to the original Propellerhead software rebirth that was just emulation. <laughs> Maybe we just wanted to you like, escape that. Set stigma, the record straight <laughs> over a twenty year period. Yeah, fair enough. We, we think it's yeah. more exciting to just give people new tools they didn't have before, right? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, that makes complete sense because also, why would you buy Reason if you weren't getting something that that wasn't? You would need something that wasn't available elsewhere. And it, yeah, exactly. I see that. Okay. And in the complete opposite end of the spectrum is we also try to make stuff that's more like real instruments. So this is friction that's basically a violin synthesizer that's more about just playing something very realistic compared to object that's like, what can you do? Well, everything. So this is more built for... This is really built for, you know, we, we saw a need, like, sample strings are really hard to do dynamic leading lines. So we went, oh, let's, let's try it out. Can that but do it, some weirdness as well? I mean, surely there's... It goes to other string instruments, of course. But it also go, goes to maybe more weirdness. But we really just wanted to, you know, find a new instrument that you could try. And there's a lot of stuff here. Another thing to know about our devices is we have a, a, a rule that we try not to remove things. People are different. They have different needs, different tastes. You know, you know, all know the story about the 303. It's like everyone hated it and it failed. And then the people who loved it found it. Mm. You know, it's one of the more expensive things you can buy. <laughs> That's the same approach we have. So this is the drum machine from you know, the first version of mm. Reason back in 2001. And we would never remove that because it still does its job. And it's still quite fun to play with, actually. Just load in maybe an 808 set, and you can really get this traditional step sequencer workflow. Just like Rebirth. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like Sometimes it. you just want to work this way, right? Yeah because it makes you do music in a different way. Uh, and of course, I haven't even talked about effects. There's, like I said, 83 devices, so we could be here all day. But of course, we have stuff like, you know, model compressors. Yeah, we nice. have, you know, more kind of crazy effects too. So I really like synchronous, for example. Oh, what the That's heck? A, what does it just do? a modulation craziness. You have these three curves that control these effects, and it can go from a very simple you know, kind of sidechain effect to really strange things like this. Or maybe this. I see. So we try to really, you know, try as many fun things as we can come up with. That's really cool. Like, I've seen some, like, you know, time-based effecty stuff, but it's not a common design like thing where you've got yeah. automation curves that, and I guess that you've got nice ways of drawing them in and stuff. It, oh yeah, I can see yeah. you've got tools so it's like... And of course you can also in. pull them out because we're still in the rack. Never forget. So these curves can be routed ah. into anything you might want. Ah. <laughs> so every time you think you've kind of reached the limit you realize, oh hang on, I can I can route yeah. this wherever I want. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's cool. <laughs> uh, 
Wow. So that, that's three reasons already. Uh, speaking of devices, we have one thing that we think is particularly special and that we think kind of we're doing it differently from other companies. Uh, so I'm just going to move out of Ableton Live for a sec to let people see the actual standalone Reason version too. So this is Reason the DW, and I'm going to show you some stuff here uh, with what we call players. And players is basically our take on MIDI effects, if you put it simply. But we really, again, wanted to design stuff that felt like you were getting an awesome new thing. Right, that you were getting this thing you've lusted for and bought and that has been designed by someone who just loves that thing. That's what we want to do. Uh, and there's a ton of these. So we can start super simple, just with the scales and chords. This is uh, very obvious what it does just from the name, right? I said it to maybe electric piano here. So this just keeps you in tune. So I set it to C minor and I will never go outside of C minor, whichever note I play. Even if I play just white keys, you'll be in C minor. But it also generates chords. You choose how many notes you want, the inversion, and maybe if they're open, I want to add an octave below. And when we designed players, we really wanted them to also be like, like you know, in modular or when you buy hardware MIDI stuff, you can just stack them. So what if I just put an arpeggiator below this? Just take the top one. Getting my chords. Mm. Maybe take a more fun sound than this electric piano. Let's do this. Maybe turn on the second arpeggiator and draw in a little pattern here. Let's do this. But I had immediately had a question, which is, can you sort of re-sample internally? Can you kind of sample? Abs absolutely. I'll, I'll just record a little short clip down here in the sequencer. I'll turn on my pre-count and just get something, right? That's a little loop. Now, there's a bunch of ways. You can just right-click and go bounce in place. And you get a little audio track. Oh, and wow. this little audio yeah. track, you can, of Boom. course, you know, export to disk or to a new sample within the song. But there's also outputs on each channel direct out that you can route to whatever you want. So if you want to sample it on your hardware, which a lot of people are doing, you can route it out to your audio interface and go, this is the channel I want to record. And we actually have a sampling feature built into Reason 2. This is what I was going to I was like, yeah, if this is my 90s studio, I want to whack it into my, my yeah. Akai. You actually have a sampling input for the entire Reason rack that's connected to your audio interface by standard, but I can just connect, you know, a track here. And now this is routed internally to every single sampler that's in Reason. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's do the old school drum machine that I already showed you, right? If I go back and reset this so it's empty, each of these little uh, sample browsers for each channel, sure, you can just browse and get, you know, a kick drum. You can also hit this little sample button. When you hit that, it starts recording. Oh, shut up. <laughs> and now it just recorded when I played back the thing. Yeah. That was my recording. And I'll just, I don't know, I'll shorten the length. Yeah, that is and exactly And then I can start I mean. sequencing this. That's cool. And of course, I can do this with whatever I want. So I can just, you know, route in my master and, and record from that or, or whatever. There's a bunch of ways to get your yeah, sound I think out it's something that audio. is not often thought about in DAW design. That is really important because you've got all of this playground of crazy things, you know, objects yeah. and stuff. You can make w one weird sound. It's like wham. You just want to throw it in and m manipulate it like you've sampled and... Having yeah. to do, like having it all be possible internally, like you would if you actually had a hardware setup. Yeah, that's, really, that's actually legit. Really cool. There's another really nice little trick: is uh, record sources on every channel, and if you hit that, this becomes a virtual audio input uh, to any audio track. So it's like if I just want to record it live while I'm doing some tweaking, right? I don't want to automate. I just want to record the results of me kind of mucking around with the filter. 
then I can use that to kind of print it at the same time. This, this was a, a nice detour, but <laughs> yeah, a sorry, couple I've of things about players, players. That, that I think actually leads into this. Like players for us is a way to kind of start your ideas and then maybe print them and get out. So a typical example of that is one of our most beloved players is Chord Sequencer. And while scales and chords, that's a thing that's like, here's harmony and theory, and whatever you do, you're going to be put in that box. Here's the box of harmony and theory. Chord sequencer, it's, it's the opposite. We basically asked a bunch of musicians to kind of play us some chords they like together in a certain mood or genre, whatever it could be. And then we mapped them out on this grid. 80s pop. Yes, it sounds like 80s pop. <laughs> But then we also made sure to color code this, so the really light green ones is like, this is probably a good jump. This, this makes sense. This is what the musician thought would be a nice transition. But the darker it gets, the dimmer it gets, the more kind of unexpected it is. Hmm. And you can either just play this on your keyboard, or you can actually start se sequencing it. Uh, were you just playing single notes on your keyboard then to trigger the... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just triggering the pads. You can make this little sequence and kind of make that your song structure. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff here. Different genres have very different approaches to harmony, especially if you get into jazz stuff. They know the rules so well so that they start breaking them. Mm. <laughs> so here's one that's really kind of far off the 80s pop. Oh, I don't know, like, I just put a 707 under that and we've <laughs> pretty much got a nice house track. I know, right? <laughs> and you, you never have to use everything, you can just go. And then That's you're kind nice. of ready for the dance floor, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we're doing a lot of these players that are kind of meant to start something for yeah. you. Yeah, idea generators. There is a chord in Ableton Live, but you know, not to, I'm not dissing Ableton Live, it just doesn't have this. It does not have devices yeah. like this. We really try to make sure that it kind of, it doesn't tell you what to do. It just gives you a new way of thinking about it, gives you a starting point. So for example, uh, if I really like this and I'll record this little house thing, why not, right? I'm actually just recording, you know, the input MIDI, mm. the actual note I'm hitting to trigger the pad. But since this environment is recent, like we have control over everything. Stuff that's really hard to do when you're a plugin. You can't really ask Ableton Live or Logic to kind of play this through and record it and put it on this track. But here you can just go, oh, I'll, I'll send this to track. Just takes whatever I did and spits out the actual chords. Ah. So I can go, okay, these chords were nice. I'm going to change them a little bit. I'm going to kind of yeah. remove this top note here. So I'm getting more. You, I mean, you can kind of do that, you, but you have to like send the MIDI to another track and actually exactly. record it out as it is in real time as well. You can't just go, bip, <laughs> have it. Just... Exactly. You, you kind yeah. of have to go, let's, let's commit through a recording, right? But if we keep going with players here, let, let's use this house thing. Why not, right? Uh, you also have stuff. Uh, like specific sequencers that are made for, you know, specific types of instruments. So I'm going to add some drum sounds here. And this is Kong, which is a great kind of drum workstation that gives you a lot of control over the samples and effects per pad, but it doesn't have a sequencer. Of course, there's a drum sequencer player. And this is just made for making drums, right? It has probability. Wicked. It, of course, has uh, different step lengths. Oh, per track. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah I see it. Perfect. So this is a really kind of good way to sequence the old school way, regardless. If you have a, a VST3 loaded up here in Reason, you can still sequence it with an old school pattern sequencer. So now we're kind of getting to a, a track level here. But we also try to cover every bass. So another really popular player is Bassline Generator. Because we actually we started talking to music makers, even like super pros, 
And one thing they complain about is like, I can make the song, I can make the hook, I, the bass lines <laughs> always screwing me. Like always. And I think that's a problem I have too. So I use bass line generated quite a lot. This was made in a similar way where we kind of played a bunch of bass lines from different genres and then chopped them up into on beats and off beats. So let's do a little uh, synth bass once again, why not? And these little on beats and off beats are then laid out in this little uh, diamond. So here's kind of one pattern and then I can just move around here. What do you consider an offbeat and an onbeat? What does that mean per se? Basically the, the 16th notes, if it's on the 8th notes or if it's the offbeat 16th notes. Okay. Because when you start looking at how bass lines are made, they tend to be these combinations of syncopation and not syncopation to mm. get that kind of group. And this gives you kind of an interface to just explore what ah. different bass lines there are. <laughs> Never thought of this. I want to play around with this now just to better understand how bass lines are constructed and then yeah. port this over to my modular synth. <laughs> exactly. Make bass you start line. getting. Yeah. It kind of, kind of works, right? Yeah, it kind of works. It's a good starting point. And you really kind of, you can change things if you want. So if you like the shape of this bass line, you can still go in and say, actually, this one should be in major. Right. And this one should probably not be an octave. It should be two octaves. It's going to be all the way up here. Yeah. Can you quantize it to the same scale that you were quantizing everything else to? Again, since everything is kind of stackable, I simply can add like scales and chords, yeah. turn off chords, and now it's always C major, right? Yeah. So that's the kind of modular nature of players that really let you do, you know, I can just do some random movements yeah. and it doesn't really matter what they are and still get C major. Yeah. If I want. My personal favorite, maybe because I was heavily involved in the design, but that's one called Pattern Mutator. And, and I'm, I promise to stop talking about players after this one. No, no, I just, players I really for me is like, I, I, this is possibly the most important thing. Yeah, Ideas. I think this is just a, a really great one because it's traditional step recording, like, you know, SH-101 style. And can, so just really quickly, players all work in as a VST instrument as well. I know we've moved yeah. over to standalone here, but this is all, it could just be locked to your host tempo and yep, just bop exactly. along and spit So basically what, what you do in, in Ableton Live is you can just instantiate the VST3 plugin, uh, put a player there, and the player is automatically routed to a MIDI out device, and that is sending MIDI to your host. And then it's up to your host. It's like you can route it from one channel to the other, right? Yeah. That kind of depends on the host how that is made, but uh, in Ableton Live, for example, you simply choose from the MIDI from dropdown and say, well, from this track that's spitting out this MIDI, right? While in Logic, they have dedicated... Uh, MIDI effects slots where you load plugins and there's a MIDI effects version of Reason Rack plugin. Uh, okay. So yeah, if, if you use Reason as a plugin, these all work fine. The only thing that doesn't work is the kind of send to track and direct record thing. Because like I said, we can't really control yeah. the host. We can't really yeah. tell the host to write some MIDI data somewhere. But this uh, this pattern mutator is, came from an idea that like step sequencing per step means you don't necessarily know what you're going to do. Because you're most people <laughs> are not smart enough to think like where is the the pause the, the rest and the tie and the like i sure am not so i generally just do okay let's do something in c and just just do a rest and then I'm, what am I? I'm like oh i'm at 14. let's see what happens if yeah. i'm at 14 here <laughs> I get this kind of seven over four, but what we really wanted to do is also make this a starting point. So instead of just recording, there's this mutation where you can set the likelihood of something happening to the sequence and the likelihood of an octave changing, of note swapping place, of it changing the kind of density of the pattern, the length of the notes, the velocity, and then you can just get new variations. <laughs> You can do this f 
forever, really. And it's not just monophonic either. So if I go back to this little uh, polysynth and remove this chord sequencer and the chords I had, I can just do the same thing here. Pull in a pattern mutator, maybe do some just chords. Oops, I'm playing the wrong one. There we go. <laughs> uh, some rests. Rest. There we go. Now I have this little pattern here. And I can start mutating this. Oh, that's nice. It's a good little riff. I like this one. And then you copy it to the pattern, so you send it back into the... Yeah. I see. And you kind of start building a groove box, right? Yeah. Yeah. More like you've got a little modular synth. You've got your little sequences and you've got your voices. Exactly. That's what, so it's really fun yeah. with players is that it's almost like having these small little, you know, islands of sequencing and, and MIDI that you can then choose to commit to your track. And I think players is one of the most fun things in the recent rack, just because they're idea starters. They're mm. kind of, they're getting you somewhere. It might not be exactly where you end up, but it's a place to start. And we really try to design with like music first. You then, you could then do your combinator, couldn't you? And then combinate them into a, a literally <laughs> like a little music machine, exactly. a music outputter. Yeah, it's fun that you should say that because in uh, in Reason Plus, the subscription, we have this thing called sound packs and we release several sound packs uh, every week. You have melodic, techno grooves, object, dark future garage, wh whatever you want. And you can uh, give it a listen and see if you like it. And these, when you get them in Reason, they're actually just combinators. Mm. So here's a combinator called Classic EDM House. This sounds like this. <laughs> This sounds better than what I understand EDM <laughs> to be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, I think maybe it's uh, this is more authentic. less EDM, more <laughs> retro. But you have these controls that the patch designers made for it, like the filter envelope. The drive. The reverb. The shape. Really but in, inside is I, like an entire see, session. Yeah, it is, yeah. Mixer, reverb, a chord sequencer with this chord structure, an instrument, some processing, an audiomatic for lo-fi effects, EQ, stereo imager. And what's cool about this, like compared to getting sample packs, where you basically get something and that's what it is. You have to yeah, work yeah. for it to Done. really change it. Here I can just go, I like this, but I don't like this Europa patch. So I can just go into Reason's patch collection, search for organ seems seems nice home organ one of the good old subtractor the first ever recent synth or maybe a b3 almost got a bit screamed delicate yeah or do something completely different just you know i'm gonna add oh, an yeah, object and kind of start full circle i wanna <laughs> hang drum right Actually, kind of nice. <laughs> Just need so a bit of soulful really... vocals over that. And again, the 707, yeah. maybe. Exactly. Boom, 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 boom. So, so these kind of sound packs that come in Reason Plus, they really are also starting points that you can then take control yeah. of. We, we really we really don't want to tell people how to make music, which actually leads us quite conveniently <laughs> to Reason number five. I feel very smoothly. Reason. Yeah. We, we really try to make sure people can use Reason their way. That's why we have the VSC3 AU AX version of the rack, why we have the standalone DW, why we have the choice of using a very traditional sequencer, the timeline, recording, editing, or using players. That's also why we have these content packs that aren't just something that's done and you don't touch it. Rather, it's a suggestion, like here are what we think you should tweak, but Go in, go nuts, right? Mm. Do what you want, reroute everything, start connecting CV cables. We want Reason to kind of be open for that exploration and, and so that you can use Reason in a way that fits you. I know a lot of people who use it just for players. I know some people who use it to just start the beat. I know some people who use it to produce, you know, number one selling records. 
it's everything in between and we, we don't discriminate. However you want to use it, that's fine by us. Well, I'm convinced. <laughs> I am I'm, good. I kind of already was convinced because you've shown me this before and I'm like, I really do want to use these instruments because this is basically the kind of music making that I do in hardware is being able to just have a playground, connect things, explore sounds and get ideas and then, you know, have it suggest some things, but then have me have the ultimate control over what that is. Yeah. Um, it does seem really dang cool. <laughs> like, I really uh, it, 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 it's play. something else. Like I, I've tried a lot of things. I've, I've studied music production and I've used most DAWs out there. But f for me personally, and of course there's a bias, but I, I wouldn't work here if this wasn't true. I just get most music made with reason. That, that tends to be the end result for me. Hmm. And I think that's just, maybe it's how we design things. Maybe I'm used to it, but I think there's an inherent fun yeah. in these things, an inherent fun in the devices and the kind of that idea of working. Like if, if someone wants to give it a try, there, there's a bunch of different ways to use it, like I said. And it's not just that it's a plugin and a DAW. So when you get Reason, you always get both. You get all versions of the plugin and the DAW. And there's also both a subscription that includes everything we've made, all 83 devices, several weekly sound packs, everything we will release in the future. So when we do a new a device like object it just shows up and you're ready to go but you can also buy recent 12 outright if you just you know you want that and you want to be comfortable with it just just do that so we try to give people the choice really mm. like do do the thing that feels good for you because we think that leads to more music and more music is why we do this happy music makers is the goal <laughs> Well, thank you. By the way, obviously, Gear for Music is a shop, and so Gear for Music sells reason. I would be remiss not to mention that. So if you do want to pick it up, we'll put links below, obviously. Um, but yeah, thank you uh, for taking the time. It's, it is super cool. I do want to make some sick house <laughs> in reason. There's going to be I, some bangers in I your near future. It, I actually genuinely do. So thank you. Leave questions, comments, and subscribe for more. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you. Be well. Bye.